All right, guys, it's Sully, and uh, I have some bad news. I uh, sat down here tonight to continue my uh, Black Knight Halberd full playthrough of the game for achievement completion, um, which I have only recently picked up after about a year and a half, having stopped, and I don't remember why. Um, and yeah, I uh, I went to load my game, and the, my character is gone. Um, all that I have is my uh, original character that I had played to, when I completed the achievements when this game first came out. Um, I have a level 1 character that I've beaten the game with. I have nobody else in my character list, and right here in the second slot was uh, my character, a male character named Sully that I started for this guide uh, that I've been using, and he is just gone, and I'm not sure why. Uh, absolutely no idea. I've... Um, Deleted my local save and downloaded the cloud save in the hopes that maybe somehow that might do any uh, something, but I, I knew it wouldn't, but um, my character's just gone, and I have no idea why. It, it makes no sense, and I'm scratching my head over it, so uh, there's absolutely no way I'm starting all over to redo everything I've done to get back to where I was, and, and we were pretty close to the end, so unfortunately all I'm really going to be able to do now is sort of walk through what I'm pretty sure uh, still needs to be done to complete all the achievements. Um, after I had left off, uh, we were in playthrough two. We had gotten four of the five missing miracles and uh, basically had played through kind of the first third of the game. Uh, rang the two bells, went through Sen's fortress, uh, and then went through An Orlando to defeat Ornstein and Smo, and then uh, acquire the Lord Vessel. Uh, then we then had the warp ability. Um, what I would need to do next is um, go through the Dark Root Garden and defeat Sif to get the Covenant of Artorius, or whatever the ring is called that you have to equip in order to drop into the Abyss to fight the Four Kings. Uh, then I would go through New Londo Ruins uh, and kill the Four Kings. Um, I would then go uh, down into the catacombs uh, before dropping down to pinwheel I would um, I'm gonna link in the description um, a little uh, gif showing how to drop down to get to um, the paladin Leroy summon for pinwheel um, and the drop right before you make a one last drop down to paladin Leroy you want to head right and into um, head into the area there with a bunch of uh, sarcophaguses in the walls. Uh, you would want to run to the end of that hallway and go behind the Titanite Demon and open a chest for three uh, Eye of Death, I think they're called. We never had ten, I think I only had nine, and we need ten for the final miracle. Um, what you would then want to do is run, rather than fighting that Titanite Demon, you would want to run all the way back to the entrance to that area and then if you save and quit and reload your game, it'll make that Titanite Demon kind of respawn at his initial location and unhostile. And then you can go to the coffin that's along the left-hand side, almost to the Titanite Demon that you can interact with to nestle into it. And after you're in that sarcophagus or coffin for several seconds, you'll be teleported to uh, the Gravelord Nido boss area, which is also um, the, uh, the area for the Gravelord Covenant. So then what you could do is go and interact with Nito, join the Covenant, um, give the Ten Eye of Death. You would be rewarded with the Great Sword, Gravelord Great Sword Dance, I don't remember exactly what it's called, Miracle. And that would unlock the Prayer of a Maiden achievement for acquiring all of the Miracles. Um, from there, you would then want to drop down, summon Paladin Leroy, uh, let him drop down and kill the stupid wheel skeletons um, so you don't have to deal with them yourself and then you know run through drop in and kill pinwheel um, after killing pinwheel you would want to equip the sunlight maggot so you could progress into the tomb of the giants uh, make your way through the tomb of the giants um, through the dark area with all the annoying like giant dog skeleton four-legged things that are very aggressive and do a lot of damage um, you may have to uh, refer to an earlier video, sort of, to see the path through that area. Um, I'm sorry again that I can't illustrate it for you. Uh, you would need to get all the way down to the 
bottom and lower part of that area where then it becomes illuminated and you can remove that sunlight maggot helmet and you enter a cave if you're human um, Paladin Leroy will invade you so deal with him uh, you'll follow the cave path um, past a few more enemies and into a big open area with uh, a bunch of little pinwheel servants uh, where there's water down in the lower area um, this is a good place to uh, farm for humanity if you clear this area out, the little skeletons in the water will constantly respawn. So if you um, if you walk down one of the ramps that leads into the water, and all those skeleton guys will come towards you, and if you put on like the covetous gold serpent ring and kill them over and over and over and over again, they'll you can farm humanity that way. Uh, you're gonna need 30 humanity to open the shortcut to Isolith through the Daughter of Chaos uh, Covenant in order to uh, properly advance Solaire's quest line. Um, uh, with all that said, in that area is also the fog door that leads to Gravelord Nido. Um, I don't think we have any sort of, uh, divine weapon to use to kill this, the, the three little dork skeletons that constantly harass you while you're fighting Nido. Uh, what I would have done is just dropped in and hung back and let them come to me and kill them and just wait patiently for Nido to come to you. You don't want to go too far forward in this area because you'll, uh, wrangle up other you know, large skeleton archers and stuff, and it's just stay as far back as you can, let Nito come to you, kind of whack his little skeletons while you're putting damage on him. A lot of Nito's attacks will also kill the, the, those little skeletons, and uh, once you kill him, you're done in that area. Uh, if you can remember to switch to the symbol of Avarice for extra souls. You may consider um, leveling up Endurance, uh, certainly to max out your your stamina and maybe to get your equipment load up so that you could take off Havel's ring and, and maybe use the Chloranthi ring instead. Um, you're going to have a bunch of extra souls. I mean, you're going to need souls in order to upgrade weapons at the the giant blacksmith in, in playthrough 3. But, I mean, there's a lot more bosses along the way, so you're definitely going to be able to spend souls on leveling up. And, I, I mean, I guess really just getting more health or getting your equipment load up through endurance is your best bet. You would really have to spend a lot on, you know, attunement slots and, and faith in order to be able to use any miracles. You know, like if you wanted to use the Homeward Miracle and not have to worry about Homeward Bones, you would need like 18 faith. So, I mean, that's a ton of points that might not even be worth it. So, when you're done with Gravelord Nido, um, then I would suggest uh, going th through the Duke's archives. Um, remember that you will... Uh, get killed at the first Seath encounter. If you have a Ring of Sacrifice, you can equip it. Otherwise, just be sure to spend all your souls before that. Um, you'll go through, you'll be killed by Seath. You'll appear in like the jail area where you'll have to fight your way to the bottom and climb a ladder uh, and get a key from a chest that you can then run up to the top of the area and exit. And uh, once you're out of there, you can follow the path around into the, the archives area where you have to go through and twist some staircases you may again refer to one of my previous videos to see sort of how to get through that area but once you can um, rotate a staircase to get to another level to make it backtrack to a previous room and then drop down to the other rotating staircase and then rotate it to get to the other side slide down a ladder pull a lever to open a bookcase and then you can then get out to the bonfire that's on the on the ledge overlooking the outer area um, from there, then you can run back through the way you had just come, through that bookcase and into the other room where you'll pull a lever to open a stairway down to the outside area. Um, once you're outside, you just want to run into the crystal caves. Uh, make your way through the crystal caves, and um, at the end is the Seath battle. Uh, what you probably would do is run, in, run right past the little clam guys that are, unless you want to take the time to clear them all out, if you just run past them into the Seath battle, once you trigger the Seath scene, you would want to save and quit. Uh, that'll put you outside the fog door, but it'll reset all the clam guys so that you can then re-enter the battle. Run around um, Seath and wait for him to get close and whack his crystal to make him damageable. Um, you want to equip some, some curse prevention gear. You should have the curse bite ring. I'm pretty sure I led you to that. Uh... Curse Bite Ring is a lot of help, and so is the uh, the red, I forget what it's called, but like the red sorcerer set that, you know, we got early on and, and used until we got the, the gold hammered set. 
So with your curse resistance up, once you whack Seath's crystal so he gets staggered briefly and then you can damage him, just get right up against him. Whereas like side tentacle, whatever it is, meets his body and just whack away at him until he's dead. Uh, once he's dead, all you'll have left is Izalith. Um, but now that I think about it, we had an issue when I got to... Um, to Anne Orlando in that we had never progressed Solaire. So what you're going to want to do is um, warp back to Firelink and you're going to want to run through all the way through the Undead Burg um, all the way to the Taurus Demon defeat him and then after the Taurus Demon you come out and to the left is the bridge with the Hellkite Dragon to the right is little area where you meet Solaire and you're going to have to go talk to him and that'll progress him to uh, to Anne Orlando. And then you'll have to warp to the uh, Chamber of the Princess Bonfire. And you'll have to backtrack all the way through and to the first room in this big area, which is immediately after the stupid archers outside. Um, and there's a bonfire in that room that you can't warp to, so you have to run to it. And uh, Solar should be sitting there, and when you talk to him, he'll say something about... He thinks you've become fond of him. Once you exhaust his dialogue there, that'll uh, advance him to his next location. So then what you'll want to do is warp to uh, to uh, Daughter of Chaos. And then you'll have to make your way in, you know, through this, you know, the, the lava area, the demon ruins into Izalith. So the first thing you do from here is... Um, head down and out into the demon ruins you follow the linear path and you go through a fog door into the ceaseless discharge boss area easiest way to fight this guy is to run all the way to the end he doesn't become hostile until you either attack him which you're not going to do or until you loot the gold hammered set all the way at the end of the area once you do turn around and wait briefly for him to rip his arm out and create a big lava explosion and then simply run as fast as you can all the way back to the beginning of the area to the fog door once you get there, turn and look at him, and he will eventually sort of jump and reach the, grab the ground basically in front of you, and you can just whack his hand four or five times to kill him. Uh, once he's dead, the lava will drain out, and you can uh, then head down below and follow the path along, um, and then you'll fight past um, a capper demon, and then you'll follow a, a downward curving stairs along a wall. Uh, when you get to the base of those stairs, you'll see um, an area below with uh, an item on the ground, and there's a bonfire down there. But before you drop down there, um, you'll be inverted, uh, invaded if you're human by Knight Kirk. So kill him, he should be very easy. Drop down, kill the stupid worm on the wall carefully because it flails about and does a ton of damage. And once you kill it, you'll have to, uh, you'll be able to rest at that bonfire. Uh, and then you can run straight forward, and, you know, just a brief jaunt ahead and into the, uh, the room with the Demon Fire Sage. Uh, the Demon Fire Sage is just like uh, the big uh, stray demon in the, uh, in the revisited Undead Asylum. The way I deal with him is I, um, I don't even think I lock on. I just try to run behind him. Um, if he does any, like, you know, hammer slam attack, you know, you just want to roll out of the way and not get whacked by it um what he'll do is his like uh area of effect he, he, you have to get a handle on which animation it is but he'll do like a sort of a i think maybe he put puts the butt of his staff on the ground or whatever and a few seconds later he does an, an area of effect that really only goes kind of forward so if you're behind him by his tail when he does that you won't take any damage so stay behind him as best you can, circle around. If he flies up in the air, he's going to just smash down, so you want to create some distance and, again, do your best to stay behind him. He will land on you and do a lot of damage. So once he's dead, um, you follow the path ahead um, and down. Uh, it forks up or down. Up leads to a lift back to the Daughter of Chaos bonfire. Um, down leads to another bonfire right before the Centipede Demon. Um... Once you rest at that bonfire, you'll you'll walk along the, the curving tree branch to, to the lowest level, and you should see Solaire's summon sign there. And you're going to want to summon him for the centipede demon battle. Um, if his summon sign is not there, I would suggest quitting the game and reloading. I would suggest um, warping back maybe to like Firelink, 
and then warping back to Daughter of Chaos and retracing your steps back to uh, the bonfire above the centipede demon battle and then take a little path down to the ground level and by doing some combination of those things I, I remember I've had problems in the past uh, Solaire's summon sign should appear so you'll summon him for the centipede demon once you go through what I like to do is um, kind of head to the right jump across the lava as best you can on the solid ground and get to the larger open area on the right um, and head back all the way against the wall and Solaire should follow you there Centipede Demon, it, I think, is pretty easy. Nothing real special to talk about. Um, if you can chop off its tail, you'll get the, uh, the the orange charred ring that you'll get anyway once you kill it. Um, watch out for its slamming attack and its jumping attack and just chip away until it's dead. Uh, once it's dead, don't progress forward. That uh, would lead you to another bonfire and into uh, into Isolith. What, what I instead want you to do is uh, w Homeward Bone Out head up to the Daughter of Chaos bonfire, and now this is where you're going to need 30 humanities in your counter, so get your, your, your humanity counter to 30, interact with the Daughter of Chaos, I guess it's Quelag's sister, and join that covenant, and then what you want to do is um, offer humanity to, humanity to her, and you need to give 30 total, and once you do that, it'll increase your rank in the covenant to, to rank plus 2. Once that's done, you'll have opened the uh, the shortcut door into Isolith. So what you'll need to do is um, head back down to uh, take the lift down from Daughter of Chaos and then drop down into the Demon Fire Sage room. And when you exit that room out of the front, on the left is the path that leads to the shortcut. And as you get, you know, you take a tree branch down to the ground level, and as you get down there, you should see some of those chaos bugs, and there's going to be nine total. A few before the, the shortcut door that you can now interact with and open, and a few the rest after that door. And now eight of them are just normal chaos bugs, and when you kill them, they would respawn if you come back to the area, use a bonfire, or what have you. One of them has, like, red eyes, and when you kill it, it'll drop a sunlight maggot. You have to kill that one. So what you want to do is carefully kill them all. Make sure you kill nine of them. Look around, lock on, find them all. Uh, do your best to not let any, let any get away and up the steps and into Isolith. Kill them all as quickly as you can before you, uh, you go up the steps. And once they're all dead, uh, make your way forward. And once the transition to Lost Isolith happens, you want to backtrack back to the... Um, the shortcut door that's the open door where, where it was, and you should see Solaire there on the ground. If he's not there, uh, quit out and reload your game. If he's still not there, warp to a, you know, Homeward Bone to a the Daughter of Chaos bonfire and run back, and he should then definitely be there. And when you talk to him, he'll, he's kind of sad. Was it all for nothing, or have I lost my son? I don't remember exactly what he says, but once this happens, he is now progressed to where you can summon him for Gwyn. So, um, what you'll need to do from here is run on into Lost Isolith across the bridge past the, uh, the stupid demon, um, and then take a tree branch up to the left, follow the path around to the right, kill the, the witch, Isolith witch, whatever she is, uh, if you're human, Kirk will invade you one more time, kill him, and then it's time for the stupid Bed of Chaos boss battle. I will in the description link the way I do this, the video to the uh, the way to slide down, get into position, and throw a couple firebombs quickly to destroy the node so you can then just roll down the center and kill the, the bug with one shot. Um, I don't really have any good advice for, for fighting this boss normally. I've always thought it's pretty much the, the low point of a, an otherwise great game. And uh, once the Bed of Chaos is dead, you can then warp back to Firelink drop down where Frampt's head is sticking out and uh, and offer the souls to the Lord Vessel to open the way to the kiln of the first flame. Now you're ready to fight Gwyn and move on to playthrough three, so work through the kiln past the uh, Black Knight, summon Solaire, uh, kill Gwyn. Once he's dead, you want to ignore the bonfire and walk out of the arena uh, to get the second ending, which is the Dark Lord ending. And uh, once that's done, you'll be dumped right into playthrough 3. And uh, once you're in playthrough 3, there's a few things you need to do, but it shouldn't take too long. You will need to uh, head through the Undead Parish and kill 
the bell gargoyles ring that bell you'll need to head down to blight town and um, this is all the stuff basically that i did in the in the last video is what you need to do um, so you can kind of follow my steps in that video if you need a, an illustration you got to kill the bell gargoyles you got to kill quaylag um, and ring both bells so you can get into sen's fortress go through sen's fortress and kill the iron golem um, and then uh, actually the easiest thing to do is going to be to get to the dark root garden uh, maybe go the back way like uh like we did uh through the valley of drakes through uh the lift under firelink shrine so that you can um ultimately get to sif i mean you could also yeah if you go the back way you might have to go to andre to buy the crest of artorias so you can open the the locked door and then go through that locked door and run past the stupid um forest covenant npcs and straight ahead through the next little area to get to the sif arena you absolutely do have to kill sif one more time for the third soul of sif um once you have the third soul of sif then you could go to an orlando uh we're not you don't need to kill ornstein and smo um if you uh because all you would need to do is ultimately get far enough in an orlando that you get past the stupid archers into the final area and uh you can run from there and make your way to the large room before ornstein and smo and go around to the undead or to the uh, giant blacksmith and that would be your final destination if you've done everything else up to that point um so once you did reach the giant blacksmith and play through three uh, i don't think i ever actually bought the uh, acquired the giant halberd and the giant uh, shield that he sells and I'm not certain that those are required for the Knight's Honor achievement but you're gonna want to go ahead and get them anyway and then all you're gonna need to do is uh, upgrade all of your uh, 13 boss weapon or th 13 weapons that are at plus 6 up to plus 10 and then you're gonna have 15 weapons that are ready to be turned into boss weapons um, let me see if I have a, a list here of what's what. You're going to have um, the winged spear. You're going to use uh, the soul of the moonlight butterfly to create the moonlight butterfly horn. Uh, one of the shields, I guess the heater shield, you'll use the second moonlight butterfly soul to create the crystal ring shield. The Falchion, you'll use um, a Soul of Quelag to make Quelag's Fury Sword. The Uchigatana, you'll use the, uh, an another second Soul of Quelag to make the Chaos Blade. The Claymore, you will use with a Soul of Sif to make the Cursed Great Sword of Artorias. The Straight Sword Hilt, you will use with a Soul of Sif to make the Great Sword of Artorias. And uh, the Caduceus Kite Shield, you will use with a Soul of Sif to make a Great Shield of Artorias. The Butcher Knife, you'll use with a Iron Golem Core to make the Golem Axe. And then the Cestus, you'll use with the second Core of Iron Golem to make Dragon Bone Fist. The Lucerne, you'll use with the Soul of Priscilla to make the Life Hunt Scythe. The uh, Spear, you will use with... Um, Ornstein's soul to make the Dragon Slayer Spear. The club you'll use with Smo's soul to make Smo's Hammer. The long bow you will use with a, a soul of Gwendolyn to make the Dark Moon Bow. The Sorcerer's Catalyst you will use with uh, the other soul of Gwendolyn to make the Tin Dark Moon Catalyst. And then you'll use your second soul of Gwyn with the long sword to make the Great Lord Great Sword. And once that is done, you should unlock the Knight's Honor achievement. That should be all you would need. Uh, and again, once that achievement unlocks, you should have unlocked every achievement in the game. And I can't tell you how sorry that I am that I have to end it like this. Uh, after going so long and having left it sort of on a cliffhanger and then picking it back up recently to work back through it. Uh, but... I really don't have any other option at this point other than to uh, to start the whole shebang all over again, and I just don't have it in me to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, I want to thank you if you followed along with this. Um, I hope it was helpful. Uh, I'll apologize one more time for the way it has to end. 
Um, hopefully, the way I've explained everything here in this video uh, to end it all up is, is going to be good enough. Um, I know it would have been much, much better to just sort of watch me go through everything firsthand. Um, one thing I wish I would have done differently is I wish I would have played on a fresh account so that uh, the achievements would have unlocked as I met the requirements so you could have sort of seen them pop up. Uh, I guess it's all kind of moot now that I'm not even really finishing it uh, firsthand. Um, yeah, that should be it. So uh, just quick recap here for playthrough two that what I'm not illustrating. Final Miracle from the uh, Gravelord Covenant. Sif and then the Four Kings. Uh, Pinwheel and then Gravelord Nido. Um, Duke's Archives to get to see the Scaleless. Uh, Demon Ruins for the Ceaseless Discharge. And the Demon Fire Sage. And the Centipede Demon so that you can get to Izalith and kill the Bed of Chaos. Um, in the midst of things in there, you will have to advance Solaire since I didn't do that as I rushed through. Um, finish playthrough 2 by killing Gwyn to get the Dark Lord ending by leaving the arena. And then a very short playthrough 3 uh, where you probably first go down and kill Quayleg and Blighttown. Uh, then go through the Undead Parish and kill the gargoyles, um, kill Sif to get the third soul of Sif, uh, make your way through Sen's Fortress, kill the Iron Golem to get to An Orlando, make your way through An Orlando and past the annoying uh, Silver Knight archers and into the final large An Orlando area so that you can get to the giant blacksmith and craft all of the, uh, the remaining boss soul weapons. Um, and that should be it. Again, uh, I apologize for how this has to end, but I do thank you if you kind of followed me along on this adventure. Um, I am kind of glad I could get back to it, but it's very bittersweet that it has to end the way it does. And uh, that should be it. Dark Souls Remastered, uh, probably my favorite game, certainly on the Xbox system, if not maybe of all time. And uh, I guess that's all. Sully signing off. Take care.